Okay, so you know, you know I, 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 I don't know. I mean, maybe this item should just be referred to a committee, which it should have been. Yeah, I know. I, I understand. Councillor Thompson, point of order. Uh, Madam Speaker, I think I'd like to have the opportunity to be able to ask the CIO uh, information on this very important matter. Is the CIO available? I understand economic development's here. I appreciate that, but um, I, I have, it's about the internet. I'd like to have some questions about the chief information officer, as opposed to Mr. Williams, who is from economic development. Okay, he, he um, works at Metro Hall, so we can ask him to come. Do we want to wait? No. Well, there you are. Can we stand this down? Can we refer? Well, two more items left. This is the last item. Well, I, I, I would have questions uh, naturally, but I don't want to wait either. Refer to the next meeting. May we refer to the next uh, meeting of council? Well, we've already, already voted to wait, but... So can we move to reopen and uh, go through that process again, Madam Speaker? Okay, so Councillor Davis, what is the solution here? If, yeah, okay, just a sec. Uh, but Councillor Thompson, you're up on a point of order. Yes, that's. Um, okay, but you can't move motions on a point of order. No, I, no. So I, my my question simply is that if the CIO is not able to come today, and I would have question, what can we then do with this matter? And I will now sit, Ms. Madam. Send it over to the next meeting. Well, that's what I'm suggesting, but it's urgent. <coughs> the only thing that I can suggest is that we defer to the next meeting. On a Good point idea. of order. On a point of order, Speaker. Okay, then I, I really um, I don't know what the council wants to do with this. On a Councilor point Davis, of order. What, you, what would you like to do? I was simply seeking confirmation that this was properly before us and that we had not had a position taken on behalf of the council and that, and then that was clarified so I was asking questions of the mover we should move on with the debate so that's what I'm asking to complete my questions of the mover and have a vote on the matter okay we'll go with that and then Councillor Thompson if you want to put your name down you can, can move to refer it later of the mover okay no but he can reopen it yes he can he can. He can, Councillor Perks. Okay, Councillor, Councillor Davis, do you want to finish asking? You have two, two and a half minutes to ask questions <coughs> to Councillor Layton. <coughs> Councillor uh, Davis. Okay, so uh, to the mover, Councillor Layton. So this, as I understand it, the CRTC decision is being appealed to the cabinet is that correct yes and so the cabinet is going to make a decision any day on this matter and it's urgent that we take a position similar as Calgary has done one way or another but <coughs> Madam Speaker I, I, my microphone's not on My clock is just ticking away. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, Cabinet is going to make a decision on this matter any day now. The City of Calgary submitted their proposal at the beginning, uh, at, at the end of January, um, uh, sorry, at the end of December, and we are just now able to, uh, to, to get a point, um, uh, get a, uh, communicate the City of Toronto's decision or, or position to Cabinet. So that's the urgency of doing it now. They could be ruling on this any day now. And your motion asks uh, that we support the competitive approach and to confirm or uh, support the decision of the CRTC. This is consistent with the City of Calgary's position that it is, uh, we should support and uphold the CRTC decision to allow for more competition for these, uh, uh, for, for this network. And internet access has certainly been identified by many as an equity issue. Um, and it's important that we ensure and uh, that internet is affordable as well for all 
all residents of Toronto. Is yes, that part in, of in, your in the in this in the report released yesterday, it showed question. quite clearly that 40 percent of Torontonians don't have of low income households don't have access to the internet. Um, one of the driving forces behind this is cost. Jim. And the last thing has to do with the right of way. Calgary, I read the Calgary submission. They're concerned about continued um, um, interventions on the right of way. Constant cuts of the utility cuts and, and the addition of, of, of on street uh, boxes that have to accompany some of these. Technologies. Thank you. Thank you. Just to members of council, where you have your, your name questioned to staff, you're asking questions either to Councillor Layton or to staff. Okay, so if you have questions, put it in request to question staff. Councillor Campbell. Okay, Councillor Karagiannis, just move your name. You could take your name off there. Okay. Okay, Councillor Campbell. Question is uh, what's the definition of affordable and what's inaffordable? And does, uh, that's the question. I have a question to the mover of the motion. What is defined as affordable and what is unaffordable? I, that, that's not something that I'm in uh, any capacity to answer. Okay. All right. Then um, that, because that's in number one of the of the motion, and um, it mentions a monopoly, but multi, uh, do not multiple companies provide internet service, which would by definition not be a monopoly. Yes. So, some some companies uh, own some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, utility equipment that's uh, that's out in the ground, and some access them as uh, uh, as as ISPs. They, they they buy time on them essentially. So, how many providers are there of internet service? I, you're asking me a question. I'm not quite in the position to answer. Does staff have an answer to that? How many providers of internet service are there to the? You can't really wander. Like staff that. doesn't know. What, I can't? No. No. Well, it, 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 I've, been, I've been given license by the chair to ask either of the mover or of staff. Did you? Oh. Well, I we do know. have staff here answering the questions. Well, Can not, anybody Madam chair, answer the okay, question? In, in, in fairness, that. I don't expect them to have answers to questions that they haven't had an opportunity to research. <laughs> but I thought I would put it anyway. They're, they probably have, they're probably as likely of knowing the answer to that as I am. Do we know, given th this matter was, is before us, Madam Speaker, because of its urgency? And so rather than refer it to executive committee, it's an urgent matter. And my question is, when is, it, when is the uh, cabinet expected to deal with this? It's my understanding is it's before them right now. The comment period has lapsed. It was uh, a majority, I believe, over the holiday uh, break. Um, and the, the, the moment I got news that uh, that this, the city of Calgary and others had taken a position in the city of Toronto as a council had not is when I brought the motion forward. So if, if cable companies or internet companies were in fact to lower their prices, subsidizing internet usage, would not the mover of the motion expect that they would up their prices somewhere else to compensate for the loss in this particular segment of their business? And there, and so you might have cell phones prices increasing, cell phone so plans. The, the, silly, the CRTC ruling actually says that the companies, they don't have to subsidize, the, the, large, the large corporations don't have to subsidize the smaller carriers to provide it. They can actually provide, they, they just have to provide it at a wholesale rate plus a margin for profit. So this isn't, I'm not making this up, right? This is from the CRTC, it's a ruling. They do it every couple of years and it's being appealed. So I'm not, I'm not just coming up with new policy here. I'm, I'm saying that the, that the City of Toronto should support the CRT's decision, which the purpose of the CRT decision was to provide for greater affordability and, and to break the monopoly or the duopoly, uh, like you described it, um, break that uh, and allow for these other carriers to come in, much like they do for cell, cell phone technology. So uh, Councillor Davis made reference to uh, correspondence by the mayor. Do we know if the mayor has made correspondence in this regard? I don't know. Yes, he has. Yes, All right. Thank you. Right, thank you. Councillor Thompson. He's, he, uh, yes, Speaker. Um, so I had a uh, question off the CIO. Is he here? I don't see him. 
So I'll stand down until we can get him. Is he coming? <laughs> we can't reach him. We're, we're trying to find him. Rob is in Metro Hall, so we're trying to find so, him. So, uh, Speaker, if, if um, yeah, I, I, if, Speaker, if that is in fact the case, um, what provision is available to me uh, at this point to ask for a deferral of this item? But you can put your name when down. When I speak? You can put your okay, name down. Okay, my name is down for speaking then. You can then. move referral. So then I will uh, stand down uh, with respect to not being able to ask questions, and I will speak to a deferral at the appropriate time. Okay. I'll be requesting a deferral. Thank you. Councillor Karagiannis. Thank you, Madam Chair. I got questions of staff, and then I got questions of the mover, if, if that's okay. Uh, no, um, not. To staff, uh, through you, Madam Chair. Do we know, if you got a sense when Cabinet will be making a decision? No. Thank you. Um, can I direct my question to Councilor? Yes. yes. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Councilor Layton, I'm, I'm just wondering if you would, um, would you like to reconsider that we maybe want to defer this until staff gives us some reassurance as to when cabinet is going to be moving. I appreciate the fact that you might have some insight, but uh, cabinet has its own schedule and its own priorities, and I'm not sure if what you're telling us is right or wrong. I mean, staff doesn't seem to know, so unless you're looking at a crystal ball, I would say to you that we might be off. Uh, what, uh, what we're told is that Cabinet is considering this right now. It could be today, it could be tomorrow, it could be three weeks from now. Um, the fact is we've missed our window to submit uh, a, a formal statement. If we would like to make a statement about this and ensure competitive uh, uh, rates within uh, internet usage, which will help provide access to, uh, to, to, to many families in our own city and our communities, then we have to make a statement now. Uh, the City of Calgary, and I, I appended this to it, gave a very, uh, very, very complex and a very thorough analysis of this about how this impacts cities, how this impacts families and cities, and how this impacts the major and minor Going characters. Back, you said we missed our window of opportunity. There's a formal window uh, for comment uh, on cabinet appeals, or at least I'm told this may be something that, that, that you Sorry. understand better. We have yeah, missed that, uh, that window. Sorry, no, no disrespect, but I'm a little cloudy. Uh, we're told, I'm told, who's, where do we get the information? Speaker, I'm not understanding the line of questioning. Just, just using up time. I don't get it. I'm not using up time. I'm, I've been told the it's cabinet is going to be fine, but I'm told the cabinet is going to be is thinking about this and the Minister of Water Opportunity. Where do you get all this information from? Okay, Councillor Kerjanis is asking question about the mover on the motion. Ma Madam yeah. Chair, we're told that there's a window of opportunity we missed. I asked staff if, if we missed this, they said no. I'm asking the mover if he's got knowledgeable information that he can share with us so we can make a knowledgeable based decision. Yeah. You've been up besides, you know how this besides I mean, like, I've been told, missed our window of opportunity. I'd like to know more specific Councilor facts. Councillor Janice, you know, you know very well that there's a process that for cabinet appeals from CRTC decisions. There's a, there's a defined timeline. Uh, to, 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 to comment on the appeals. We have missed that timeline because of lack of information. Uh, I brought that information forward when it was received to me, and I think if we want to make a statement like the Mayor, Mayor Nenshi did from Calgary about the need for more affordable and more com competition within the internet, pro within internet right. providers, not that aware. we need to you're, make a statement. You're, you're, not, you're not sure windows of opportunity and who and no, where else. No, Thank so you. I, I detailed Thank you. very clearly to you just now that our official window of opportunity to submit comment has closed. We missed that. And we hope to sub I hope that we will still submit a comment because what essentially is going on is a political appeal of a regulatory decision. Thank you. Councillor Holliday. Speaker, a uh, question to staff on this. Has uh, the federal government or the CRTC at any time come to the city and requested our input on this? Through you, Madam Speaker, not to my knowledge, no. Have they requested any municipalities? Do they come to us for telecommunications issues from time to time? Never seen it? <coughs> I, I, I honestly don't know the answer to that question. Anne is saying that from time to time we will get They'll, they will open for uh, consultation. But in this instance, they did not come to us. But they don't come to us. Okay. 
not directly to us. They may consult stakeholders, of which municipalities are often stakeholders. Okay. So we're, we're on our own. Uh, we're set here whether or not we're going to make a statement. Uh, in practice, over history, has our unsolicited statements to the federal